So over the last couple of weeks, I've been supplementing the frog's usual cricket diet with some maggots. Now there is a downside to feeding frogs maggots. Let me show you. Maggots are the larva of flies, in this case the green bottle fly. If you saw the last few episodes, I may have mentioned that some of the maggots tunnelled under the gravel as soon as I put them in. Obviously the frogs were unable to eat them. I expected the maggots to drown or otherwise fail to pupate as they usually prefer drier conditions. Obviously that was not the case and they completed their life cycle and now there are several flies in the tank. A lot of them have fallen into the water, but I was hoping that the rest would be picked off by the frogs. But judging by this little guy's performance, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there are quite a lot of the uh, green bottle flies, I think they are, that have been uh, floating in the water and they're drowned mostly. So I'm going to have to spend a little bit of time clearing those out, we don't want them rotting away in the water, so we'll get rid of those. And uh, there are a few live ones about, still some on the side and there's a few at the top up here. So uh, when I take the lid off to feed them the crickets, they're obviously gonna fly away. So uh, it's a little bit of a downside, but um, it's fine, we can deal with that. Let's feed them some crickets. So to feed them crickets, I will just uh, place uh, this in here, give it a bit of a knock on the side, knock off a few, and uh, that should be enough to keep them going. So I've removed uh, pretty much all the dead flies and a few dead maggots that I managed to find. It's quite important to do this as they will make the water go quite dirty. So uh, remove any uneaten and dead food uh, from the tank, keep the tank clean. So last week we saw a dragonfly out by the pond. Now I've been hoping to see some different species out there and in a way I have. But let me show you what I've found. So unfortunately I haven't seen any live dragonflies, but I have seen evidence that they were here. This is a dragonfly casing, or exuviae, the remains of the exoskeleton of the nymph. There are several of these found around the pond. Now I can actually use this to try and identify the species of dragonfly that emerged from it. Using an online guide and looking at the body shape, eye position and shape, and other details, I believe I've identified this as a southern hawker dragonfly. Here is a picture of what an adult would look like. It is a shame that I missed seeing them emerge, but I am glad to know that they have been breeding here. So to finish off this week, I thought we would take a look under the water in the pond, as it's been a while since we last did that. The most common creatures you can see here are the pond snails, but you should see several tadpoles darting about. It's interesting that even though they hatched out at the same time as my frogs, the ones in the pond are still at the tadpole stage. I'm not even sure that they have their back legs yet. The main reason I put this down to is the temperature of the water. The warmer it is, the faster they will change. The water in my tank is warmer and at a more constant temperature compared to the pond, so I would expect them to grow faster. But it's still surprising just how much faster they've grown. I'm not sure how well you can see in these images, but there are some newt tadpoles swimming about too. I'll try to get more footage of them in the future. But for now, that's all I have for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back next week for some more Frog Watch. Goodbye. <laughs>